Greetings, one and all, from the White Mountains of Arizona. We've had a particularly windy day today, so we've sought refuge here in the crack. <laughs> we call it the crack because our little hill looks like a, a moon. <laughs> it looks like a butt, okay. And so we're in the crack to try to get out of the wind. All right, we like to have fun with it. Oh, look at this guy. Uh, as you saw by the title, we're going to be channeling Mother Mary today. I know this may trigger some. Who are we? But uh, the idea is to approach this with no ego, see what the channel has to say, and then whatever, you know, take it or leave it. Sorry, I got to walk very carefully here. We are on a steep hill with a lot of round rocks. The sun has set already. And so it's going to be a dark one here today. Yeah, anyway, try to approach this with no ego. That's my thing. With no religion, just looking at it. That's my hope. Okay. Okay, Tara is ready. So have we connected to something? Yes. It doesn't really have a form. It's just a, a color. Okay. Just a pink surrounding color what vibrational frequency does this color resonate oh. she says i'm not in your universe i'm in universe too oh is that a lower universe or a higher universe says she straddles this universe she's the above and the below okay so how are you qualified to answer questions about mother mary i am that energy okay were you did you ever embody human form here on earth I've embodied many a human form while also sharing the space with the spirit involved in that body. So you shared a body with another higher self, another consciousness? Yes. Did this consciousness allow you to enter? I could not enter without their permission. Uh, what was the purpose of entering this body? To help along changes needed at pivotal points. Okay, so you inhabited a human who gave birth to Jesus Christ? Mm. The person you speak of within a particular religion, I would have inhabited more than one form. This is why there is such a connection felt between the so-called characters and the book that has been written, but my energy extends beyond religion. I was in, her name was not Mary, the woman who gave birth to the man you call Jesus. I was also part of Jesus. I was also part of the community. I inhabited many, sometimes not for their entire lifetime, but enough to awaken and push. What is your goal? My goal is to see that this universe transcends into the next universe. This universe is very close, but close being much different in linear years. Close to me is, this will happen soon. Close to you, the transition of universe will not happen within your incarnation at this time. Well, we can barely transition out of 3d here <laughs> i'm not ready for the next universe that's for sure but there's many wonderful steps along the way the 
time in which you spoke of before, in the time of the woman that you gave the name Mary and the man that you gave the name Jesus, to me was only a little while ago. And so it's with that step and the steps that came after would appear to me that the transition would be soon. Okay, and so your purpose as Jesus and his mother Mary was to help us move closer to ascension? Mm, yes. The purpose of my form, my form is actually many. I'm not a singular entity. Entities are, mm, we'll say different in the next universe. But my goal and the goal of the other pieces of me, which would be, I guess, my mm, species, family, was to inhabit certain humans in order to transition them out of your so-called matrix so that they could teach others to do so. We can't make you do anything that violates free will amongst a host of other things. But if we can be an influence to a willing individual who is open to the experience and is willing to do the work, we work with them. That's how I choose to share vessels with those whose souls call out, this one is ready. And when they are ready, they will help to spread their message. Their message is more than just their lifetime. They spread it to continuing lifetimes and timelines. And so there may not have been many, what you would call Jesuses, but there have been enough to help push you to where you are at this point in time, which has been enough. Do you only assist ascended masters? They became ascended masters through their own free will. But we do connect with those who are open to becoming such. Do you have a name? For? So I imagine one does not call upon you. You come when it's time. Yes. But your kind understands the energy, the frequency. Oftentimes, and usually through religious figures, such as Mary or all of the Marys that have existed throughout different continents and cultures and religions and belief systems, that mm, you say that it's all connected to the heart, love, that frequency that you feel the frequency that you have connected to source energy. And yes, we are just a part of source, just like you, although we do reside in a different universe. So when someone calls upon, let's say, for instance, we'll stick with this religion, the Mother Mary or the Virgin Mary, the Mother, it's not necessarily the person that you call upon but the frequency, which is a mixture of that person's frequency at that time, as well as the frequency of my own that was mixed within. Uh, are there any notable figures that you've assisted that we would have heard of? Any being that you would consider an ascended master or one that has done something quite outside possibility in this realm doesn't necessarily mean one had to walk on water, 
but just merely do something that was once considered impossible. And once the collective caught on, that this is now a possibility, you advanced forward. We've been there at the forefront of every non-possibility becoming a possibility in your realm. Are you saying that humans aren't capable of these things without your help? You are, and we are very much a part of you. It's all frequency. There is no shame in asking for help. We ask for help all the time. It's how the universe works, especially this particular universe, is based on connection with one another, whether that be a frequency connection, a spirit connection, or the connection of human to human, human to animal, plant, all based on connection. So when one soul says, I need help, show me how, you're in essence calling upon a different version of yourself to help you at where you are at this moment, right now. Can you explain in terms that we would understand what it's like in your universe? Many in your culture have played the game Tetris. You see bricks of different shapes falling. You have to navigate the shapes into alignment with the empty space. In my universe, that's what it is. It's navigation through empty space in order to make a solid connection. It's the best I can explain. Okay, I'll have to meditate on that one. Do you have polarity? Mm. No, we would not say it is like the polarity here, positive, negative, and neutral. It's more working with inversions. And although you could say that positive and negative are inversions of each other, the inversion is quite different in this realm also having to do with the Tetris image I gave earlier. I'm fairly certain that people watching this will want to know about Jesus Christ. What can you tell us? Inhabiting that vessel as well. If there are those that are connected to that religion or at least have an understanding of that religion, must ask themselves, what happened between the time when this man was born and when he became what everybody knew as Jesus Christ, the man who could miraculously heal, walk on water, crucified on the cross, yet rose from the dead, disappeared. Miraculous. But this and we do not wish to offend, was not someone that was specially chosen to walk this path. He chose that path, just like each of you choose your path. And although there have been books written on this person, there are books, both physical and non-physical, written about each and every one of you. You just may not know it. He didn't know there would be a book written about him at that time. But he went through a long process of fighting his own ego. From the time he was a small child up until the time he became a man. He knew the path that he wanted to walk, but he was also very scared. He knew what that could lead to. The ego wanted to do self-preservation. Don't share your ideas. Don't share what you see. Keep your mouth shut. Try to fit in. 
Does it not sound familiar to the human experience? He was very much human, just like you. He had his own ups and downs, mood swings, crying fits. He fell in love. He was a human. But at some point he gave in to what you would call your higher self. And he said, what is happening here cannot continue. I must help the people that surround me, my friends, my family. If I know some truth, if I see something a certain way and I know that it could help them, I would do more damage by keeping my mouth shut than it would to say a few things and perhaps offend people. Better to have said it and to offend than to have said nothing at all. That is the more heart-based approach. And he chose that. And it was difficult. And at times he had to find ways to continue motivation to keep on the path that he was on. And eventually, through a arduous process, one that I would not say is easy, he let go of his ego. It is quite remarkable to see a human being without the ego program. That is the person that became the Jesus Christ you know pretty well. Okay, there have been many, I imagine, who've quested to remove the ego, but there have been very few ascended masters. Where, why do people fail? Because it is hard. And there is no sorrow in failure. There is a lesson in everything. To walk the path of an ascended master is quite difficult. It does mean giving up the world in which you grew up in. It gives up everything that you understand about this world. How you see the sky, how you hear the birds, how you feel the wind, how you look at your friends and family, even how your eyes, your physical eyes see changes. And that is quite scary, especially to an ego program that is meant to help you to see, understand, learn, interact with humans in a particular way. So a soul and an ego would have to come to a point where they are ready to basically, you would see it as dying. They are not physically dying, but their ego program dies. It does feel very much like an actual death. It feels as though you have moved into a different realm. How you move around feels different. The air feels different. Your speech is different. And so it's not a shame to have failed at giving up the ego program. But we do help to gently guide each and every one of you towards eventually releasing it. The more people strive to release that program, Albeit it is beneficial if you wish to stay in this 3D dimension. But for those wanting to move out of this 3D dimension, a full release of the ego is required. And those willing to take on that journey, we are always here with you, if not inside you. You keep answering my questions without me having to ask them. All right, I think that's everything. Um, I mean, my only thing would be as we move closer to ascension, I imagine we all have to go through an ego death. But is that true? Will the, the lower timeline, lower in air quotes, will they go through this ego death as well? They would go through a shedding process, much like you call it shadow work. When I see you, James, go through your shadow work. Sometimes 
it's quite painful sometimes to look at certain things, but you heal and you grow. Those that you say air quotes are of the lower timeline are still growing and evolving, perhaps not going to the exact same plane as those that, that would entirely remove the ego, but it doesn't mean they don't grow and expand. They're still very much a part of your process. You need each other in order to grow. But they're going further into the ego. That is their choice. Well, this has been a great communication. We thank you and we love you. Do you have any last message for those watching? It doesn't matter who you pray to, what tongue you speak, what religion you follow, or what image it is that you devote yourself to. All is connected to the frequency of love, and that is the only thing that matters. All right. Wow. Oh, it's dark now. <laughs> yeah, it got kind of dark there. The coyotes are out. They made oh, their wow. announcement. Oh, hey, Venus is out. <laughs> I don't know if they can see that. So that was a, that was a high yeah. vibe, huh? I feel pretty good. Yeah. <laughs> I feel like I just uh, had like a, like a, I don't know, vitamin smoothie or something. <laughs> like you feel well, they, really good. <laughs> they vibe higher in the higher universe. I yeah. Guess. And I don't think we've ever channeled something in an outside of the universe. Yeah. I'm not sure. We were supposed to channel some spiders, but we never did. Yeah. yeah. I'd, rather, I'd rather channel this thing. But they're a good spider. <laughs> this, this, one was, this one was pretty awesome. <laughs> yeah. Well, I can't wait to watch that one back. Uh, I mean, we wanted to talk to Mother Mary, but we got a whole different thing. Yeah, well, I think that was, she was in her. She, she was in the lady, in, but she was like, her name wasn't really Mary, but that's okay. Yeah. <laughs> like, it's okay. Names don't really matter. It's sure. the thing. Well, it's really dark, so we better yeah. go. All right, you guys. For the well, coyotes, terrorists, thank you for watching. Let us know if you have questions for future channelings or suggestions of things we should channel. Let us know. And uh, yeah. Catch you guys next time. Ciao. <laughs> Bye. Bye.